This is Governor Larry Hogan, and I don't always have time to listen to podcasts, but uh, I do enjoy listening to the Maryland Crabs podcast. Live from a grungy kitchen table located in Annapolis, Maryland's scenic and historic capital, it's the Maryland Crabs podcast. With each episode, your hosts, Tim Hamilton, John Frenet, and the occasional guest will dive in and pick apart the stuff that really matters most to you. We're too lazy to actually solve any of these problems, but we can definitely stir the pot. From schools, politics, parking in the fire lane, to those horrible people who drive BMWs. And here with this week's episode, live from the kitchen table, Tim Hamilton and John Frenet. Hey, welcome back to the Maryland Crabs. It's Thursday. It's noon. That means it's time for us. And we're doing this live. What? You said it's Thursday and it's noon. Hey, our last episode with Stuart Pittman it was a very popular episode. It's good to hear what the county executive has to say. And we got a little bit of a news drop right after that went with the uh, ICE pulling out of the program to house the detainees up at Ordnance Road in Glen Burnie. Yes, that did hit right after you interviewed him, which was convenient for us. Yeah, we didn't know that was going to happen. And it was kind of funny with uh, Pittman, who had, he had said that, oh, yeah, no, they're not going to retaliate. Why would they pull out and everything else? And I'm like, why wouldn't they? You're looking to give the people they're holding in jail legal assistance. And that irritates them. They're not big fans of that. No. I mean, you know, you know, and that's pretty much what they said in the letter that was coming out of the uh, out of ICE saying, you know, you're working against what our mission is. So I don't understand why he's so surprised that they pulled it. Well, I mean, I think well, he didn't make any secret of this. I mean, I think this was inevitable the way it was going to end up. Um, you know, he, I think that was, was it part of his campaign? Well, he said he was going to end both of the programs and, well, yeah. and then he, then he sort of flip flopped and said he wants to keep the one where we house the detainees, where we got the income. He said the facilities were much better than anywhere else in the country. And it was a, a humanitarian thing to give them a, a better place than to be the one in Salisbury, Baltimore, down on Our the border. Our jails are the envy of all detainees across the country. <laughs> like when you're looking to be detained, you want to be detained here in Anne Arundel County. Uh, apparently. The brochure is very specific about the amenities that we have, the tennis, <laughs> the macrame <laughs> classes. But it's it's kind of funny. It'll be interesting to see how the county executive wades through his first term because I was surprised that he hasn't made any changes, any whole you know, aside from the fire chief, uh, he's asked a couple of people to slide out of the acting positions and put some people in, but he really hasn't made any wholesome changes, which I thought was kind of interesting. Well, you talk to him about that. I mean, it's just you have people who are in place, these deep state people, so to speak. But they're people who just do their jobs, you know, regardless of party, regardless of that's political well, philosophy. I've, I've always said to everybody that's been elected, whether it be, you know, mayor or county executive or whatever. But I mean, you know, your predecessor didn't hire people to be slackers. I mean, they may not be the best person for you, but – just because they were hired by your predecessor doesn't mean that they're bad people or not doing no, their but jobs. also there's a lot of political payback in some cases, not all cases. There's like if you're looking at fire and and police and you need someone who's the best person for the job because that reflects upon you as an elected official. But there are some appointed positions that are kind of in there that no one knows what they do really. That they're kind of rewards. I mean, we all know that. Let's not be children. That's true. That's Children. True. Well, I've also I've also um, talked to several department directors and whatnot, and they're they're upset because there hasn't been really any direction. He hasn't given any. Hey, I really like what you're doing. I, I'd like to keep you on, and and they're kind of in this limbo. Is, is that normal though? Um, I th I think so. He's never he has not had, and he said that in the meeting. He has not had a full blown cabinet meeting. He's going out individually. But yeah. um, I've I've talked to four department directors that are all like, yeah, I don't know whether I'm staying or not. I'd like to. But I, I just don't know. Is it, generally, when you come in, is there kind of that confirmation where someone's elected and they, they say, okay, you're good? I would hope that would be the way it works. I don't know. I've never yeah, been know. never been an appointed uh, appointed position. Not yet. Yeah, not, not never. No. Not never. Hey, got a really deep episode with crappy sound. Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of coffees being made in the background uh, there. Yeah, you, know, you don't realize how loud a coffee shop is until you go try to record in it. I mean, it's like, you know, I swear they were beating up people in the back. And yeah, you know. we you, look, we're we're a shoestring operation. Let's admit that. So oftentimes you got to meet people in places that is convenient to them or. We have to improvise. And we've had some where we've had great content matter and just editing, you're, you're pulling your hair out because you got to make the sound work. 
and you do the best you can. So we did the best we can. So every once in a while, you're going to have one that's great. You have to work a little bit to listen to it, and but it's worth it in the end. Uh, but you're going to hear a lot of frappuccinos being made. Well, this one is uh, really kind of interesting. I, I picked up on this when I saw a article or a, a letter to the editor in the Capitol. And it was from this gentleman named Omarion White who was arrested and charged with attempted first-degree murder. That's a bad one. Um, yeah, I mean, this isn't as running the stop to, sign. Yeah, that's opposed to the other murders he could be. Um, so he was uh, he was jailed and he went to court. And ultimately, the judge found him not guilty and she actually apologized to him and said, you know, there's, they, they had nothing, nothing here to do this. And this, you know, coming just short of saying it was a travesty of justice is how the judge sort of left it with him. Now, here's a guy with a very unusual name who was arrested for first degree murder, found not guilty, but, you know, of course, the follow up to the story in any newspaper is going to be on page Z 512 as opposed to a one. But his letter to the editor of the Capitol said that he wanted the Capitol to turn around and other newspapers when somebody is arrested to put a disclaimer at the bottom saying that, you know, just remember all parties are innocent until proven guilty. They have not been tried. They have just been arrested and detained. And they say um, that at the beginning of cops too, but they're yeah, they're usually guilty. Yeah. That's true. And, I, and I, I think that it makes a lot of sense. That's some policy that I'm going to try to uh, to implement with what we have on I in Annapolis. But I wanted to talk to him and find out what he is. Now, this guy had his life ahead of him. And I mean, I'm not talking about just, OK, here's a here's a kid that's you know graduated high school and he's going to go work at the mall or he's going to go do something. This guy was a number two ranked cornerback right. in the nation playing at St. Mary's High School had a really legitimate shot at the NFL. Now, I'm not, you know, I mean, we all know how hard it is to get into professional sports. Well, but also, if you're the number two ranked cornerback in the nation at St. Mary's, which is not a powerhouse of a football program. No. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he, I mean, he had he had the eyes of, of many people. And unfortunately, he was arrested and charged with the murder of somebody that he didn't know. Uh, he didn't know the person who – I don't think they've ever caught the person, but he didn't know the person who was charged with it. He wasn't anywhere near there. And it was um, – unfortunately, it was in the city of Annapolis. It was during that time when uh, Mayor Panelides was battling that one year where it had murder oh, people were getting murder. shot left and right. Yeah. Um, and I say left and right. I mean, there was like 11 or 12 in the year. Yeah, which is Annapolis, a lot. that's a lot. Which is a lot for that Apples. I mean, that's like saying if there's a sh- two shootings in the library, saying that's a lot of shootings. You're going, well, right. two's not many. But for the library, that's a lot of shootings. But wanted to talk to him and find out what his life has been like since and what his life looks like in the future. And I got to say, it it doesn't look great. It's going to be tough for him. It's going to be tough for him because of the, I'll say, the magic of the internet. You know, you, you're found not guilty way back when and okay, fine. Nobody knows about it, but now it's here forever. It's like getting pee out of the pool. You can't get your name out of there once it's in the mix. I never thought of it that way, but let's get into it. Um, right after the break, we'll get into Amari and White. Very few things in life are so precious and so irreplaceable that we all must do our part to protect them. The Chesapeake Bay is one of those things. You can do your part by contributing to the Chesapeake Bay and Endangered Species Fund. It's that little line item you'll see at the very end of your Maryland tax return. Any amount you give makes a difference, and it's tax deductible. I'm Peter Francho, Maryland Comptroller. Our bay and rivers thank you. Learn more about the Chesapeake Bay Trust at cbtrust.org. Buying a home is a big accomplishment, and we enjoy being part of that, especially for first-timers, the excitement of being approved and knowing they were building their future in their new home. All over the county, you will find homeowners who received the funds they needed from us. I'm Alan Hyatt, chairman of Severn Bank, and I tell you nothing means more to our bank or me than helping home buyers. Last week, I drove by a house and saw kids playing in the front yard. I recall how excited their parents were when they found out that the home was going to be theirs. So if it's a home, an addition, or a renovation, see us at Severn. You'll find affordable home loans, great service, a commitment to our community, and an enthusiastic team to help you. Severn Bank, here with you. 
online at severnbank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. All loans subject to credit approval. Severn Bank is a trade name used by Severn Savings Bank. Hey, we're here at Akafi in Eastport with Omarion White, who's a name that's probably not well known to everybody, but uh, you, you caught my attention in a letter you wrote to the editor of the Capitol newspaper last week, and you were a student at St. Mary's, yeah. um, St. Mary's High School here. Uh, you were a football player, mm-hmm. and you were arrested and charged with attempted murder, or was it? Uh, attempted murder, yeah. And... In the end, it was the wrong guy. Yeah. Let's and and the ramifications that go go with this are so far reaching, and you you hear the stories about it. And I'd like to talk to you, what what happened when when this arrest all went down. What was the, what were the circumstances? Now you were how old were you? Twenty. Okay. And and it was here in Annapolis. Yes. Yeah. In. In Eastport, actually, yeah, yeah. Okay, what happened? Um, it was a shooting that took place in the Eastport community, and um, basically, I they locked me up for it. And after, I mean, they knew for this, they knew from the beginning that it could have, you know, could have not been me or something. Basically, that they said, and they were going to drop the charges, but. Uh, they end up going forward with it. Um, I mean, were you were you there at a shooting? No. The description of the person, I had something totally different on, and the cameras saw that, and they, which could have been exculpatory evidence, but they ignored it. So, I mean, so you you, you weren't there. It wasn't a matter of five people all together and saying, "Oh yeah, I think it, I think it was him." <laughs> no. Um, so you, but but you you were arrested by Annapolis City Police. Yeah. Uh, were char- were charged with attempted murder. How, how long were you held for? Um, I was uh, I was locked up for four months, roughly four months, and then I was uh, given house arrest for five months until court. And that's all as it proceeded through the court, yeah. the court thing. And when we, when we went to court, what 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 happened? I mean, you 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 claimed your innocence all along. Um, I nobody wanted to listen to you. I guess I went with the judge and. Basically, she, you know, proceeded over the facts and basically was like, you know, it's nothing here to say that he was there. It's nothing here. To, it's nothing. Like, it's, it literally is nothing here. She basically was like, not guilty, but uh, it was, yeah, in her words, it was nothing there. Well, did you have, did you have any run-ins with the police prior to that? Um, no. I mean, it, you know, traffic or something doesn't really count, but I mean, so there was, I mean, so you weren't, you weren't, you weren't this, this, this bad guy running around town Never. that says, you know, oh, there's a shooting. We need to go find Omar. Never, no. Um, and I mean, you were a student at St. Mary's High yeah. School. Uh, did you go through St. Mary's through, for you four years at St. Mary's? Or? Yeah. No, uh, two. I went, uh, transferred in my junior year from an average high school. Okay. Um, what, okay, and this, you said this happened when you were 19? 20. 20. Um, what happened after St. Mary's? You graduated from St. Mary's? Yeah. And did you go on to play football in college? Yeah, I went, I was playing in, out in Utah at a junior college. Okay. Yeah. Utah, that's quite a change from Maryland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did this whole impact? Now, when did this, was this during the summer? Were you off of school? Um, it was, I was actually on break. Okay. Home. I, I was only home for like 12 days, 13 days, maybe. Okay. Um, I was on winter break, and uh, this happened during, uh, like, me being home, and I never got a chance to get, go back. And then, um, so then you were arrested, obviously, didn't get back to school, and that was your, what, freshman year or sophomore year? My, no, that was my sophomore year. I went in 15, and this happened in 2016. Okay. Um, and what, what happened with your schooling? Basically, um, I had to leave school. Um, I and you probably had to pay for it. Yeah, I haven't I'm been g- back. Uh, um, I lost my scholarships, you know, stuff like that. Uh, and I will not be part of the And um, yeah, I, I haven't. I mean, that's, that's that's devastating for a young kid who's got 
you know, of, of future. I mean, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you were NFL material or anything like that, but I mean, that remained to be, uh, certainly remains to be seen. But that's devastating for a, a, a kid that is going to a, a, a private school that's, do, that's doing well, that's, you know, you know, you don't have a reputation with the police. You know, out, out in Utah, which is like the home of all the Mormons and, <laughs> and everything else. Yeah, and, and all of a sudden have have this come down. And and this is this was literally a rug being pulled out from under you. I mean, you were you know, looking to go to college. You were looking at you know, I don't know whether you had professional aspirations. Yeah, I actually was uh nationally ranked as the number two corner in the country. Um Wow, okay. Yeah, my, my ranking still, you know, it's still up. Uh I had offers from Tennessee, um a lot of schools to name, you know, uh, eight office, I believe it was at one point um, before this. So I had a little, and most of my teammates are in the NFL right now. So Are they really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, that's, uh, I mean, even even more so disappointing. All right. So so we withdraw from Utah, mm-hmm. from school in Utah. We and we're, and we're stuck here in Anne Arundel County going through the judicial system here. And, and was this a, a case of the police? Bad police. No, I don't want to say bad policing, but the police making a mistake and the and bad policing, or was this in a prosecution problem? Um, I believe it was a combination of both. Um, I believe it was me, uh, you know, them not knowing who I was. Um, so it can go like hand in hand. Them maybe thinking, oh, we don't know who he is, or uh, he could be a bad person. We don't know. Um, I don't even. I don't know if they knew anything about my schooling at the time or they basically got a name and it was it wasn't my name but it was similar close to it and it was a it was a lot of uh, false information put into uh police reports right that uh, i guess the prosecution believed and wanted to take to trial uh but it was nothing pointing in my direction like nothing at all now you did you grow up in Annapolis? Yeah. Okay, so you you're a, a pretty much a life a, li- a lifer here at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, and who was who was the um, I say district attorney, but who was the state's attorney at the time? Was that Wes Adams or was yes, that Wes Adams, okay? Yes. And was this a? Do you think it was a anxiousness to solve a, a case at at whatever cost? I believe it was because it was a lot of shootings happening in the Eastport area at the time. Like it was like I think three people made got shot in like one week. Okay. During that time, so I think they were just pressured, maybe by the community and maybe by the mayor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So to just get anyone solve anything, and, and actually, the three shootings that happened, none of them are solved to this day, and they locked me up for one, and was proven that it wasn't me, and still to this day they haven't solved any anything else that happened during that week. So, so we we go through a trial. And was this this was a, a bench trial, I guess, with a judge, not a jury? Yeah. You're found you're found not guilty, uh, which which is great, but it's uh, it's just doesn't take care of the problem that that you've got to face for forever. Yeah. Um, pretty much. I mean, you've got this. It's in in the database for court records. Yeah. So, now, are you uh, looking for an expungement or? Um, yes, I have, but it's it's still. Um on Google, like the articles that were well, that's, wrote that's about, what we wanted me, to, you know, me being arrested for it and that stuff. I agree with you. And that's really a catch 22 in that when you have a record expunged and by definition, I believe that means that it didn't exist legally. So, I mean, you, you can go into anybody say, Hey, have you ever been arrested for no, um, as opposed to, you know, just yeah. saying no and hoping they, <laughs> hoping nobody <laughs> checks or something. Again, with with the internet, with social media, with Google and everything else, it does last forever, and this will follow you, you know, around, uh, you know. And it, it's it's at a point now. I had we uh, had our first son. I was going to name him after me, and I decided not to name him after me because of that same situation. Because I didn't want him to have my name, and then he grows up, and someone Google's his name, and then That's that horrible. case pops up. That is horrible. And I, that that was like my biggest fear. So I actually. Hold your son after me. Uh, he's one month. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> We're here with it's Ariel, right? Yes. We're here with Ariel, who is uh, Marion's partner, and uh, you look great for just having a kid from Thank a you. month a month ago. <laughs> wow! So you made a conscious decision 
to not name your son, which, yeah, come on, I'm a dad, I got a boy. It's like, come on, we got you know, we, we, we to do that. Oh, my word. Um, I, I mean, one thing that I do is that with Ion Annapolis, every now and then we'll get a, you know, somebody will call me and, in a situation like you. And, and we did not pick up on, on your story. I, I did double check that. They're telling me they've got the same same type of a situation. Hey, my I'm applying for. I mean, it could be a job as a uh, as a as a dishwasher or a, a CPA or you know it doesn't matter what it is, but and and it's coming up. And uh, yeah, there was there was a guy that called me up and he was um, was up in a Rumble Mills or something. Got got arrested for I think mugging somebody or assault. Ended up found not guilty and uh, called up very polite. Ass said, Hey, you know, is there anything you can do? And he says, you know, I've been good. I, I, you know, I was, you know, I'm not, you know, oh man, I looked. I mean, it's trust yeah. but verify. And uh, sure enough, I mean, you know, he's got a little bit of a head lead foot and he's got, you know, four or five speeding tickets. And, you know, okay, we all do. And, you know, I, I took it off and I went back um, to uh, Google and removed it from Google and, and pulled that off. And it can be done, but boy, is it, it is time consuming to be able to do. And a lot of newspapers just won't do that. That's their policy that it was, it was public record that, that there was an arrest and that's the end of the end of the story. This guy, you know, called back and actually was in tears, which I was, it just really got me. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to speak with you in that he said, you know, I'm fighting for this. And I said, well, I mean, every, everybody deserves a second chance. Yeah. I don't even want to say you deserve a second chance because you didn't <laughs> blow your first one. And, uh, you know, you look at, there was a case up in Odenton where there was a, a violent um, child, I think, sex offender that served like 20 years in Texas. It was released, so he did his time. He came up, he played by all the rules, reported where he was living and, and moved into an area. And then the police went around on thanks or Halloween with pictures of him door to door saying, hey, this guy lives close by the neighborhood. Make sure your kids don't go to his house, um, which I thought was a little bit extreme. I, I mean, this is, you know, we're based on a culture where, OK, we, we do a crime. You know, we, we serve our sentence, whatever that may be. It may be a probation, it may be you know, nothing. And then you move on, you come back and you you figure out how to to re reacclimate into society, but when you've got people fighting against you and you've got the system fighting against you, which certainly was what you had going for you uh, or going against you in the beginning, uh, you know, during the trial and everything else, um, did the police ever have any kind of explanation? Or, and, I, and I don't know how this works. I mean, do they when they make their arrest and they they just move on? Yeah, that's. I mean, so they're not going to make any comment. They're not going to say that we. I believe that once they make their arrest. They have to stick with it. They're not going to admit fault because it makes the department right. look bad. So I, even if they were, they would, even if, uh, be, even if I, uh, if if the charges were to had been dropped before trial or anything, I don't believe they would have came out and stated we had the wrong guy. Even after I was found not guilty, even after the facts was presented in court, I never got a. I'm sorry, I'm this. And what makes it, um, I actually worked uh, for, I was working for the city of Annapolis um, doing youth, I was a youth service assistant. This, uh, once, th once the charges, once uh, I was found not guilty, right. I got my job back. I was working there before I got my job back. Where's that, at the rec center? Yeah, uh, Eastport Rec Center. And uh, I was working with the kids, you know, helping the kids. And the police would come there a lot. And a lot of them that knew me from that incident like incident and they would, you know, they, they would, and they, uh, it's just like as if they knew that they made a mistake, but they would not admit it. And I had to be around them every day. I mean, it's no- Okay, you know. so so were you were you working at the rec center prior to the yeah. arrest? So th these cops, I mean, know you yeah. to a degree. I mean, I, I you know, I, I don't know that I'm necessarily known by the cops, but I would think that, you know, you would, hey, I know I'm Ryan, let's, you know, like even, even if it's, you know, treat you with a little bit of kid gloves, let's let's yeah. dig a little bit deeper because I don't think this is something that, you know, and, and that could be a, a private conversation that they would have amongst and each other. And it was other. basically a, a case of, I feel, a uh, mistaken identity. Like, you had the victim stating it wasn't me. Then off the record, you have the detective stating the victim said it was me with no recording. After, yeah. And then you have the witness stating it wasn't me, and then you have them taking him outside for a smoke break, and 45 minutes later, or two hours or something later, he's stating 
it's me for him because they offered him for him to go home. When that person admitted to being there, they offered, they allowed that person to uh, out of free, out of jail free card and throw someone under the bus. Um, it was no picture lineups. Uh, it was just me. They claimed he looked at my picture different, which he didn't. Um, well, you would think there's so many different varying stories. Is that he was there, it was him, it wasn't him, it wasn't him. That there would be, you know, more detective work, more questioning, more let's, okay, we'll work. And I never was even brought in for it. I see if they like, brought me in for questioning first before just arresting me. They just... Do you know the victim? Um, no, I'd n- never seen him. Never know of him? Never know of him? I don't even believe he's around. He's from uh, the Annapolis area, and I've been here my whole life, so I just know people from Annapolis. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, usually somebody, you know, there's you know, a couple degrees of separation, so, I mean, there was no there was no connection between you and None. <clears throat> that's just, that's just that's so bizarre. And, I mean, I know the Annapolis City Police, and, I mean, you hold them to the fire a little bit because they've had, a, they've had several false arrest recently. They had one over on Edgewood Road where there was, they were looking for a, uh, I believe, a Hispanic or Asian man, and they ended up arresting a, a, a black man. There was another one outside the 7-Eleven one, I think Christmas Eve a couple years ago. There were some kids that got into a fight down on City Dock not too long ago, which was there. And um, and I know that several years ago, they went up on um, the apartments up on Hilltop Lane, mm-hmm. and they, you know, with a no-knock warrant to the wrong <laughs> the wrong house, and they just, you know, came in and terrified this family that's doing it. You know, I, I don't know what the answer is. I mean, hopefully with some, uh, you know, some oversight. I know that uh, Carl Snowden, local activist here, is, is trying to get a, uh, an oversight board uh, that will be able to do that and then to, to really do that. I know uh, we've got a fairly new police chief. I don't know. Um, that was probably Mike Pristoop was the chief probably yeah. back when um, when you were arrested. But now Scott Baker, who was the deputy, um, you know, he's there. He seems he's changing things a little bit differently. But I think it, it seems that the Annapolis Police Department may have a little bit more uh, room for improvement, probably a lot more room for improvement when it comes to something like this. What are you, what are you doing now? Um, I actually do uh, sports journalism. I write for the Washington Wizards and okay. uh, through uh, Prime Comedy, that's through Sports Illustrated. That's really the only thing that I have been able to do since this. Like, it's been hard, like, with me going through I, I, a lot since then, like, trying to get a job, keep a job, uh, why, mentally. Why, why did the Wizards take a, take a chance on you? If that, and, and I don't, and I don't even want to say it's a chance. I don't believe so- they. I don't believe that. Uh, I don't. Maybe they didn't Google the. I don't think that they know about right. the incident, but. But I mean, I mean, you 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 would have a tough time getting a job at Target. Yeah, you're right. Um, which is you know which is you know absolutely crazy. You know, and I, and I think that you could probably talk to your blue in the face saying that, you know, hey, I was found not guilty. I was found not guilty. But nobody wants to, nobody probably wants to take that chance. You know, I mean, I, I get maybe if you were uh, selling raw diamonds or something like that, there may be some kind of thing. Yeah. But, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's just, it just blows my mind that, that this, and, and this is something, I mean, and I hope that you can look to the places that have mentioned you know, you know with the Google search yeah. and, and contact them to see if they would be willing you know to make make the removal and I, I could certainly send you links and if they don't know how on instructions how to remove it from Google as opposed to just their site I mean I'd be more than happy to send okay. you that because it is a separate step that you need to do to sort of purge it from, from Google um, and I think there's probably always going to be something somewhere on a microfilm or a slide or something like that that'll have that'll have it and how long have you been with the wizards i've been doing how long uh, i've been doing this for about like two months you like it yeah it's fun i like it uh my major in college was uh communication so i'm pretty good with writing like that's my okay uh specialty i've always been able to write uh are you you looking to move maybe into the NFL? I mean, I mean, obviously, as, as, not as a player. I probably think at this point, since you haven't been playing for a while. Yeah, um, yeah, I've been um, trying to. I, 
like my, I've been thinking about doing, like, I, I feel like this is like a career I want to do because I like to write. So um, anything with like sports journalism, um, maybe cover like local teams first and then try to, you know, keep going up and up um, until I can actually get a, like a good job with doing it. Uh, it's fun. It's like this. Do you do any freelance work? Um, I have, yes, I have. I, I, three, four, maybe four years ago I was writing, I actually wrote about the uh, Roger Tawney statue that was downtown. Right, right. Removal, I wrote about the removal of that, like, when no one was talking about that. This was probably, like, two years before that. Right. Um, I was doing a lot of writing and stuff like that, like, for a while. Since get, I was, get a little off topic on the Roger Tawney statue. <laughs> I, I don't know what your position is on that, but I... I thought that removing it was on the surface wrong because I, I, I disagree with having with trying to erase the good and the bad history that we have. And there was a local architect that came up with I thought was just the most spectacular. Yeah, I, I knew, yeah, I, I agreed with that too. Having the uh, was it Harriet Tubman statue? with 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 Frederick get a statue get a statue of Frederick Douglass. Yeah, put them put them and yeah. move them on side to side with a with a plaque explaining the story. And you know, equal ground, equal elevation, and, yeah, and I, I thought, I thought that, that was a really sort of a fantastic idea. Yeah, that was a good idea. I don't know why they, um, you know, it got crazy with you know, people, taking. I think it was the height of like every statue was getting took down at the time. You, you know, we're coming, we're coming out out of Ferguson. We're coming out of, um, you know, I mean, we're deep into the the Black Lives Matter movement, and you look at, you know, the the South, the Southern generals, and everything else, and I mean, and, and there there were some really horrible, horrible, you know, people that, you know, don't deserve to be lauded. But I mean, um, you know, it was a it was a different time and a different place. And I think that it's, uh, you know, acknowledge it, but don't celebrate it. It's just a strange world that we're uh, that we're moving moving yeah, forward. Yeah, currently. <laughs> um, Hypersensitive. Where, where do you where do you see yourself moving forward, Omar? Uh, um, trying to get back in school. I'm, I'm actually taking some classes online right now. Um, so you're still partially through your bachelor's. Yeah. Okay. So I have, I mean I have a lot of credits still left because the break was like a two year break. So I haven't been able to get back in school or anything since then. Um, so I've just been trying to get back into school, trying to find a career that I like. Uh, it's hard because, like, I built my whole life up for football. Like, that's everything was surrounded. I, everything I did was for football. Everything I did was to make it to the NFL. That was my goal, only goal I had. So once that was taken away, it's like a restart on life because, like, it's like you focus everything on one thing and then that gets it's gone. And now it's like you have to restart. Like, now what do you do? I yeah. never thought about this part. I, this never came in my brain. Like how to maneuver in the real world. Like this never was something I thought about. Like no other career was something I thought about. It was just football. I was going to get my degree, but that was going to help me. I had to get my degree in order to play football. So sure. Everything went hand in hand with football. So it's like now it's like, how do you, where do you go? And it's like I've been, I go through a lot like anxiety, depression and stuff like that, but it's just, it's like restart. It's like, what do you, everything you know is, it was, it's, now it's, it's and not there. Did you go to St. Mary's to play football? Yes. Now is your football program that much better than Annapolis? High or is it, is it just uh, more the opportunity? Time, it was an opportunity thing. That's what I, uh, that's why I, I went and enrolled. Uh, it was basically an opportunity just to do something different. Like, that's me. I, I like to, I want to be better if it's education, you know, anything. I just want to challenge myself. That was the main thing when we were going to St. Mary's, to get a challenge. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just blown away with what, what, what you've gone through. And, I mean, I would be, yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, it'd be a little bit more understanding and more comprehensible to me. If, if you had said there were, I, we were with a gang of guys and one somebody shot somebody, but it wasn't me, I, I could sit there and say, okay, well, you know, they, they made a mistake and they got it wrong. But this, I mean, you don't know the victim. You don't know, you're known to the police. You're working with kids trying to make Annapolis better. You've got your career, your life as mapped out as you possibly can at that. Yes, and at, this, 
at that point. Now I'm going to cut you off. It's like this could have been easily resolved when I identified myself, my clothing, a picture with the clothes that I had on that day. It didn't match the description of the shooter. And it that could have easily just been like, okay, this proves, you know, if, if I say, okay, the, for example, this is not uh, how the case went, but if I say, okay, this shooter had on a red jacket uh-huh. at the time, or, or if the victim says, I've seen the shooter with a red jacket on at three o'clock, this is the person that did it. And we look at the camera and the person that you said had on red actually had on green or blue while it's other people running around in red. Yeah. That should prove that, you know, like, okay, if he doesn't match the description. If you, you know, it, it's, it's certain stuff that could have easily resolved it. Like, it's so much that could have resolved it. And it, I don't know, they just took their chance, gambled. And I don't know why, which is crazy. Like, it, it scared me because it's like, wow, these people really want to send me to jail. They don't care if I'm innocent or not. They just want a conviction. Like, that's, right. that's all that matters to them is the conviction. And... I believe the detective that was on my case actually got demoted back to a police officer. Uh-huh. He's back, like, patrolling. And that should show you, like, yeah. where the, what kind of case that was. Like, now, does your, Do you still have family here in Annapolis? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, um, and uh, it's still, still, still blowing my mind that, you know, as you look forward to, you know, the future that it's going to do. Now, did you, were you represented by an attorney or a public defender? Uh, attorney, yeah. So you got private, yeah. private counsel? Okay. Yeah. Um, which is probably much to your benefit there. I mean, yeah. I probably could have gone a number of different ways with a public defender, I would think. And, and no problem since. Um, speeding, I had, t- speeding tickets are... <laughs> no, I haven't, I haven't um, been in any trouble. I feel like I've been more so since that incident. Um, they... They have been harassing me a lot um, because I actually have a lawsuit uh, mm-hmm. about that for a lot of money. And right. they know that they have a... Is that still a, pending? Yes. Okay. And they know that it's a fairly big case and they know and they know the severity of it. And they really have been like, oh, like really harassing me since then. Out to a point where I don't even want to come... Like here, I don't even want to be in Annapolis because it's like, for example, I was in a car with a guy recently and they uh, pulled us over, um, a detective, which I've never seen. Uh, and once I didn't even say my name, I just like, my, he was like, you know, I was just like, oh, he was like, I already know you is, step out the car. I'm like, what, like what, what do we do? And uh, they arrested me for an open container, but I'm, it's not in my vehicle. How do I get around? Like it's. Are you driving? No. Yeah. Okay. And it, it's a, it's a. First, it's a. Oh, you're speeding. Then second, it's oh, he didn't turn his turn signal on. But if we didn't do that, why are you searching the vehicle for speeding for turn signal? Yeah. It's like and it's a. It's to a point now where I believe they will do anything to try to discredit me in my lawsuit. Like if it goes from. Plant evidence to doing whatever they can to try to make me seem like a bad person. Okay. And, you know, because that's their only, I feel like that's their objective to try to like, discredit my lawsuit. You know, I, I think you're you know, well on your way to sort of you know, vindication. I don't know. I mean, I think that you, one thing that you put in your letter to the editor of the Capitol is that you, and you referenced the, the article that they had in the Capitol about you. Is, and this is something that I'm going to be implementing is that, you know, on the bottom of, of each article that, you know, when somebody is arrested that we do something, it's that, you know, that, you know, hey, reminder, this is a person who has not been found guilty. In this world, we're guilty or we're innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. Yeah, screw that one up. But we are innocent until proven guilty. And, you know, it very well may be an innocent person. We hear about, you know, these people that have been in prison for years and years and years and years and, you know, decades later they're released because... Uh, we didn't have DNA testing 30 years ago. Yeah. And, you know, I like to think that uh, everybody makes a mistake. And I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about a, a police officer. You know, hey, I made a mistake. But at what point we have to own up to our mistakes and we, uh, you know, hey, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I smacked into the back of your car. That was my fault. It was my mistake as opposed to, 
um, trying to find, you know, trying to find a scapegoat for that. Um, I get the pressure that they need to solve the crimes. I get the pressure that um, nobody, myself, you, you know, Ariel, nobody wants to, you know, see the shootings and, and see any kind of crime in the yeah. city, but it, it unfortunately is yeah, here. Uh, and, um, you know, I think the police to a degree are between a rock and a hard place and being pressured to solve things, but it, then it comes at a price much, much more expensive than the cost of solving that crime when they turn around and they, you know, take four months of your life um, okay. out, of, work, out of your life and then have an impact on it for literally forever, forever to the yeah. point um, where you're frightened to name your own son to carry on your name. Just unbelievable. Well, I'll tell you that I, you know, I thank you so much for, for the time coming down. I'm very impressed that you, Wrong you know, you. You, you've, you've pressed on despite you know what you're facing, and uh, it looks like you got a good gig with the Wizards yeah. right now. Uh, now see if we can get a off. better team. But it's uh... <laughs> <laughs> so who's your pick in the Super Bowl? Um, I would like to see Chiefs and Rams. Because like you hate the Patriots. Yeah, I do not like the Patriots <laughs> at all. At all. <laughs> Anyone? I don't, actually, I don't care who wins. As long as it's not the Patriots. It's, what about the Cowboys? Don't like. I mean, I, I don't. I don't dislike the I mean, Cowboys. I mean, okay, so what, when, when you were growing up here, you know, you, I mean, you're you're kind of on the cusp because you weren't a full-on Ravens fan because they came in the middle of I grew your... up a Colts fan. What's that? I grew up an Indianapolis Colts fan. Okay. So I was with the Colts until Peyton left, and, yeah. and I have been like the— NFL Is that a throwback from when they were in Baltimore, you think? <laughs> uh, I, I just grew up, like, my friends were Colts fans. Like, everyone around me was Colts fans. Right. So I just—that's the first team I actually started to watch. Okay. I became a fan, but I haven't had a favorite team since. All right. If you if you're going forward in the NFL as as, as a cornerback, where where would you where would you want to play? What's your where, what team would you want to be on? The Ravens. Ravens. Yeah, I like how you play defense, physical. Okay. Tough. That's just how I play physical, tough. And I would like to play, you know, for a home team. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with playing with the home team. There. Yeah, that's that for sure. That's for sure. Um, I would like to keep in touch with you and figure out, you know, where where you go. I mean, if uh, if there's anything I can I can do to help you, I'd be more than more than happy to. I wish you, uh, you know, all the best in your uh, in your lawsuit going forward. And I hope that um, you know. And I, I don't want to say that uh, you know, hundred thousand, hundred million, whatever it is, um, makes it right because it doesn't. Right. And this is just something that. And it's really not even about the money, the lawsuit. It's more so about me actually, you know, proving that, I mean, it's been, it shows like it's, I think it's an article or two about uh, me being found not guilty, you know, my innocence, but it's more so the lawsuit actually show like, okay, they did some wrong. I feel like uh, it would, I don't know, to the public maybe, because people still view me like I haven't even been back to St. Mary since then. People don't even stay in contact with me that I was in contact with before the incident. I guess like it hindered so much it affected relationships, friendships, so much. Like people that I actually, you know, I used to stay at their homes and, you know, be with them on a daily basis. I came to get a like a hello or nothing. It's like it's so yes. it's not just it is it's really the lawsuit really isn't about the money. It's just about the out to I don't, it's, it's like, because the money, like you said, the money isn't going to take, it's not going to help me get back to where I was. You know, again, I don't want to force it all on money, but I mean, you know, you had, you know, the potential to earn an awful lot of money. I mean, and, and you know, we, we can guess till the, you know, till the sun goes down how right. much that could have been. Right. Who who knows? Who who knows where that was? But I mean, we, we can certainly sit there and say that because of this wrong accusation, it has, it has, it has cost you. I mean, you are... You're not able to make because of that, and it just makes finding everything there. Um, you know, and, and it's. Um, I'm not a big lawsuit person, but I think when uh, somebody is wronged, I think that it, that it's perfectly appropriate um, to move forward there. But God, God, I wish you the best of luck. I, I, this just just sucks on so many different levels. You know, I, I hope I hope things you know turn around for you. I hope that uh, you know all of a sudden the Ravens see what you're doing for the Wizards and say, Hey, come on. Come on, come on, and come on and join our team. Uh, might not be on the field, but we'll uh, we'll put you up in the press box. Yeah, and, that'd be fun. Uh, and, and we'll do that. But uh, um, Omari and White and his partner Ariel, thank you very much for coming down here. And again, I apologize for being late. Enjoy talking to you and getting to know your story. And I I hope to hear more and more that it's it's getting better. And uh, I want to hear more about Omari and White. You will. <laughs>
and he couldn't give his kid his own name. That's the part that got me more than anything. Uh, you know, he said that, and I was just... It blew my mind. Put the macho man thing on. You know, what's one thing that you want to do? You know, that's your offspring. That's my boy. I want to name him after myself. And I mean, that's just something that's prevalent in our society. And here's a guy who I'm going to give a lot of credit to that foresees the future of his one month old baby and is prescient enough to be able to turn around and say, I don't want to name my child after me. Yeah, you know, that's just absolutely because it, this is a f- affected and has ruined his life. This accusation. Think about. Remember the first person that this really happened to on a large scale is Richard Jewell. Remember him? He yep. was he was a the security Atlanta guard. bomber. The Atlanta bomber. He was a security guard in Atlanta, and I think it was 1994 during the Summer Olympics that he found a bag, and inside was a bomb. And he was a hero, and and he say he saved potentially a lot of lives. And then the press starts saying, "Well, what if he planted this himself? You know, what?" And he was accused of doing it for the attention. And it turned out he didn't do it for the attention. His life was ruined, and that was before the internet. That yeah. was before your name stuck with everything. He 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 was his his life was destroyed, and he didn't do anything but the right thing. And you think that Omarion, with the internet as it is right now, that he's always going to be branded with this no matter what. Well, we talked a little bit after we stopped recording on on this. And I mean, I have done it several times when people will call me about an article that we have on Ion Annapolis that, hey, you know, this has been adjudicated. And I've been found either not guilty or um, just even somebody says, hey, you know, this was 10 years ago and I've gotten my shit together. You know, would you be willing to take it down? And I, I do the trust but verify. I go and look. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I will take something down. I mean, I, th- I think everybody's entitled to a second chance. And I take this step further rather than just taking it off of my site is I'll go to Google and I'll go into Google Webmaster Tools and have it removed from Google. But that's only my mentions of it. It's not anybody else's. Right. And, and you're talking about right now that if someone calls and say, hey, look, I've gotten my life together. I want a second chance. This is a guy that didn't do anything. Right. He and that's so frustrating. And one thing we glossed over, or that that he didn't talk that much. He said, "Yeah, I was in jail for four months, and then house arrest for five months." I'm like, and then he talked about the case itself, and I had to wrap my mind around that being in jail, like that that you're minding your own business, and all of a sudden the police show up, and you're wearing handcuffs, and you're going, "What the hell is going on?" And your mind is racing, and then all of a sudden you're in a police car, and all of a sudden you're being checked into Jennifer Road, and you're like. Just wrapping your mind around going, what the hell? I'm wearing a jumpsuit. I didn't do anything. That's got to be scary. And for four months, I couldn't imagine going from from just a regular life, just doing doing my everyday stuff. And all of a sudden, like an hour later, I'm in a jail cell awaiting trial for attempted murder. It's mind-blowing. It's truly mind-blowing. And, and every day knowing that you're innocent, just sitting there going, when is, it's, an, it's a living nightmare going, when is someone going to figure this out that I didn't do anything? And and the thing that's really very frustrating, especially to me, is that he was known to the police in a not, quote, known to the police way. I mean, it's not like you're a bad guy roaming around town. Go, oh, yeah, we know. We know, Tim. Right. You know, he's uh, he's been drinking Miller Lite. You know, I mean, it's it's not like that. Here's the guy that was working with kids in Eastport Terrace, you know, in in the public housing complexes of Annapolis. Here's a kid that is going to St. Mary's High School. A football player. Here's, you know, a kid that's never had any problem. Now, again, I couldn't see what if there was any juvenile stuff. But here's a guy that has not had any problem with law enforcement. And all of a sudden, boom, murder one. That just seems that just seems crazy, especially if the cops know him. Personally, that it was work with the students, with the, the kids in public housing and whatnot. I mean, you would think saying, gosh, you know, that doesn't sound like him. We need to dig a little bit deeper. And it doesn't seem that they did that this time. Thinking back with uh, the Baltimore riots a few years ago and with Freddie Gray. And I remember the apologist for the police uh, at that point where they they said, well, he didn't do anything. But, I mean, look at his record. He wasn't innocent you know, babe in the woods. No, no, he wasn't a choir boy. And, but yeah, but but there was a just that really bothered me. That bothered me that there was a justification going. All right, well, he didn't do this, but you know, he he was he's not a member of society that is upstanding. So whatever happens to him, he kind of deserves it. Even if you took that that dark and nihilistic view of human nature, 
and to justify something going wrong like that. But looking, Omarion, he, he didn't have any of that. He, you know, he wasn't a bad guy by, by all accounts. No. You know, he was, you know, a high school student and, and at, at, at the premier high school in Annapolis, the number two cornerback in the, in the country. It just, you know, at some point you got to add it all up and say, you know, is, is this really our guy? And, you know, the police are under a lot of pressure, you know, because they were under a lot of pressure at the time because there were a lot of shootings and the the, the city officials, you know, they had to take action to show that they were taking action. So maybe it was overzealous. Maybe they didn't do the due diligence. And, you know, maybe there's someone listening now going, hey, you're not a cop. What do you know about what went on and what they didn't do, which is a fair point. But um, I remember in high school, I went to Good Council High School when I was in Wheaton. And our our principal there was uh, Michael McDonald, not the Doobie brother. Okay. So, which would have been awesome. A month before graduation... I, I get pulled into the principal's office along with my cousin, who was a couple years younger. He went to the school, too, obviously. And this was in the late 80s. And this is when the crack epidemic was huge. You know, crack epidemic, crack was going to sneak into your house and kill your family. And they said they'd gotten an anonymous call from somebody who said that my cousin and I sold some kid crack and that he had OD'd and he was in the hospital. And they they uh, they brought him back. but He's clinging to life. And so the principal, who's a nice guy. Until then, I mean, he got charged with embezzlement later, so screw him. <laughs> but he, uh, we're sitting there, and I'm just this scrawny 18 year old, you know, 17 year old who's about to graduate in a month. And I'm sitting in the principal's office, and they're saying, Look, we're going to call the cops, and you know, you could, you could be going to jail, and you, you know, tell us what you know. And I remember my stomach dropping out, where I'm like, What the hell is going on? I didn't do anything. You know, the worst I did was smoke at that point. Now, so I'm like, I, I got cigarettes. Do you want those? I, that, that's what, I'm sorry for that. Can I go back to my class now? And my cousin there, he's looking at me like, what the hell's going on? And we sat there all day being grilled. Turns out they called, you know, all the hospitals in the area. No one had been admitted. They didn't have, it was an anonymous call. You know, I don't, to this day, we don't know why anyone called. I've never given money to my high school, which is good counsel because of that. No one ever so, apologized. So the, so the guy dying on over an overdose didn't exist. Nothing existed. Nothing. It, it was just an anonymous call. Someone screwing with us for some reason. But then they're like, "Okay, you can go now." And no one apologized. That was one afternoon of terror uh, on my part. I'm and then sure. I went back to my life the next day. I couldn't imagine what would happen if someone came in and they slapped cuffs on me and, and put me in jail for four months. And then. My name was everywhere, so I couldn't get a job. I couldn't get into a decent college. Uh, I, that my life was ruined all because I sat in the principal's office for an afternoon. This is where he is. His life is ruined by this. He he, he really is, and I mean, uh, you know, I give credit to the wizards for picking him up. Yeah, and if you if you're if you're out there and you, you you're a newspaper or you're some sort of journalistic organization, give the kid a chance. And and it's not it's not within the will of the police department to make apologies. Uh, no, I mean that wouldn't help anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, it, I mean, I'm, I'm not speaking for Marion. I mean, I, I I can't tell him, but I mean, from a practical standpoint, you know, and things happen. If you look at all the arrests that the police made in the last you know five years, the vast majority of them were were, were legitimate, and they protect the the populace, and that's their job, and they did a great job. You're always going to have something like this that perhaps happens, but that's a little comfort to the person to whom it happens. That's true. They go home, they sleep at night. Yeah. And he goes home and worries about what he's going to name it his baby. It sucks to be a statistic. You know, that's going um, the 99% of the, of the time the, the system works. And it sucks if you're that 1%. And really, I, I wish I wish there was some way that we could do that to, to, to correct that. I, you know, whether it be a statement, you know, whether a newspaper would be able to say, okay, we found Marion White not guilty from the court, from, you know, a statement that a newspaper would then be able to, to withdraw that. I mean, I, I get that the news was that this is who they arrested, but I mean, most people see that there's an arrest, you're guilty. But even then, if you have, let's say that you put out an article that, you know, someone was found not guilty or someone that it was, was, or they weren't even indicted. There wasn't enough evidence. There's still all those other articles that are out there. Well, that, I'm just, yeah. what I'm, what I'm suggesting is that there, with, some sort of a official document oh, I see. that the newspaper, that the website, whatever it may be, would be almost mandated to submit a retraction from the search engines on that. It's not going to stop a, a screenshot. It's not going to stop anybody's memory, but it certainly, you know, could help him down the line or his son. The big debate right now, and I've heard this in the last couple of years with the Trump administration and the shutdown and the left and the right, and I think the media has been at the center of this 
as kind of a whipping boy for, for the entire division we have in the country. So they're accused of bias either way. And one of the things I've heard both on the left and the right is whenever a story is blown up by the media and it turns out to be nothing or incorrect, that the retraction that follows that is much smaller than the story itself. And you see this on Twitter. People are pointing out later saying tweets on this story when it was incorrect, 66,000. Tweets on the correction, oh, yeah. 500. You well, know? We're, we're seeing that currently as we speak right now with those teens that, that accosted the – or the – see, I, I just did it right there. But the right. altercation between the American Indian and the teens at the Lincoln Memorial last weekend, we're seeing that right now. The media initially portrayed that as the teens from Covington High School in Kentucky – being the aggressors, and it doesn't seem to be that way. Mm, but that's still not. It's um, you know, it's you're right though. But I mean, there there should be. I think there should be something there. But uh, but you know, that kid. Let's look at it this way too. So that kid. And by the way, I mean, I I followed all that all pretty closely. Not getting into it itself. I I still think that the original reporting was, was relatively accurate. I think there were some details that were left out, but still, I think that kid was a shit. But that kid. Let's let's say that he did something stupid. I mean, he didn't hit anyone. He didn't do anything that was overtly, you know, Aggressive. detestable. You're right. So he was he's being a shitty kid. I think worst case scenario, he was just being a shitty, smug, entitled private school kid. Should your life be ruined because of that? Because he was doxxed, and I got a problem with that. He's he's what seventeen, mm-hmm. and he, and yeah, if sure, that. sure he's smarmy and smug and all that stuff, but. I look back at myself at 17 and I was a shit too on some level of some, for some reason. Yeah, shit at 47. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want my life to be defined by that moment. You know, so if you look at these kids that, you know, their lives are on social media, they're defined by that whether they want to or not. So, I mean, his father, of course, hired a PR firm as every kid's father does. Right. uh, Hire the lawyer. And uh, no, I I get it. But but that said, like I said, I have to keep emphasizing, I think he's a shitty human being at 17 at that moment. You know, maybe he's a nice kid outside that moment. Maybe he got caught up in it. I looked at all the kids around him dancing and I saw the kids that I grew up with just being stupid. And should they all be defined by that moment? And that was something relatively innocuous, you know, let alone being accused, falsely accused of committing attempted murder. True. I, well, I mean, I think also that we're going to forget about this kid in sure. six weeks from now. Uh, we forgot about the, the, the kid that I got that I, I know we talked a whole bunch of them about R and R, like the, uh, the guy, the, the drug guy that was jacking the prices of the AIDS drug up. We forget that, you know, the, cause our, our memory is at the news cycle. Oh, the news so cycle is insane there. right now. But the problem is that, you know, not so much for them. I mean, I, you know, am I going to remember the name of this kid at the Lincoln Memorial, you know, 20 years from now? No, I'm not. But you know what? If that kid goes to apply for a job in 20 years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that. And that's the whole problem with them. And, and you don't have the context either. Right. All, you know, you have someone who's hiring or you someone who's in the recruiting and they're going to look at this and go, nope. And they're not going to say, oh, well, here's what – here are the other details that we didn't here's know about. Here's the reason we, we went with a different candidate. And I have to emphasize, he was a shit. But, yeah. But still, that's – Absolutely. Well, I wish, um, you know, Amarin, the – Best of luck. I hope, uh, you know, I, if I sent him a link on how to remove stuff from Google and I suggested that he, you know, Google himself and, and contact everybody and see what you could do as far as getting it, um, you know, getting it cleaned up. That's such a hassle. That's like we got. We, it is. It we, is. But, you know, for if, if you've got a f- attempted first degree murder arrest hanging over your head, that's a has That's a hassle. And that's a. That's as, as a fight worth fighting, I think. You know, I, I don't know what the status is of a lawsuit with the city. You know what, though? I was thinking about this on the on the ride over. It was a couple of years ago. Someone took out our uh, credit cards in, in my name and my wife's name for, at Best By the Buy. Way, thank and- you. Yeah, Best Buy and and JC Penny. There's like there's like five or six of them, and I caught it just in time. Shut everything down. But then it was literally a hundred hours. Working with the, the, the various companies, you know, to, to clear the, the debts right, and I had right. to find it was a hundred hours for me to fix their mistake. That, sure. that just really bothered me that I felt like, you know, I had to call around. I had to follow up. I had to do all these things. I think you screwed up. You should be the ones who are working on all this. And everyone was very nice, but it just, I really resented the fact that the onus was on me. I feel like every state should have some sort of department whose job is to do that is that if you are found not guilty of something or if you are found uh you know falsely accused or or you know your name is out there there should be some division that that helps you to clear your name like what do i do now to clear why why is the onus on him when he didn't do anything or, or you know it, 
furthering my idea that could maybe it could be a department in the uh, in, in the courts that once there is a not guilty, right. that, that their job is to contact all the ones and say, hey, I've got a court order for you to remove this. Right. Yeah. And now but now I'm getting now, as we say that out loud, I watched you saying this. My First Amendment sense is tingling. And I don't know. It's all right. This is not easy, easy as I thought it was. Well, um, well what do we get? What do we got coming up next week? Uh, well, I'm going to meet with Lee Hurt. And we're going to do some restauranty things, and we're going to do some chef things just before the Super Bowl, right? Right, because it's the Super Bowl chef things. Yeah, no, it's uh, that's kind of interesting. That's they're, they've been doing it, I think, thirteen years, where they uh, the Heritage Baptist Church up on Forest Drive has uh, chefs come in and they have soup. For the bowls and uh, on on Super Bowl Sunday, and it's a fundraiser for the lighthouse, mm-hmm. um, which certainly needs any kind of um, you know funds to raise. They did such great work anyway. there. They're amazing. You ever did a tour of their facility? Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Yeah, we go there every Christmas morning. Yeah, you do. Yep. I've seen. I saw you post it on Facebook. I thought, you know, I'm gonna do that with my kids. I think they they could use a little bit of that. <laughs> to be honest with you, teenagers. You know, it's 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 funny. My kids are twenty one, twenty four, and twenty six now, and they actually asked to get up early on Christmas morning to do that, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah, I want to get my kids to that point. Right now, they're a little self involved. Kind of cool. Well, beyond beyond that, we've got um, a little bit. I've got a little bit of a doctor talk about the flu season that's here amongst us now, and how to keep yourself healthy out of the flu. And beyond that, I have no idea. We have a wish list. What's on your list? All right. Hold on. Let me. So this is a list that I make that and some people I've actually contacted and have not heard back from. I'm looking at you, Michael Steele. I'd like to get Michael Steele. Okay. He was the former uh, head of the uh, RNC, uh, lieutenant former governor. lieutenant governor. And he's actually a really smart guy. He's like um, he, he's kind of your Republican classic. Like I like to say, just okay. kind of not off the rails. Elijah Cummins. I'd like okay. to get Kevin Spacey on. I, th- I bet he still lives in the area. I bet he's lurking. I heard he's just a really mean person in an interview, which would be actually pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, Kevin, if you're listening, which you're not. Pat Sajak. Yeah, he's a local guy. Now, I've tried uh, John Waters a bunch of times, the director. Right. And every his assistant keeps saying, not yet. He's traveling Europe. But John Waters would be fun. He lives up in Baltimore. Right. He's a director. He did... Uh, the Serial Mom and Cry Baby and a bunch of other Pink Flamingos. Yeah, Pink Flamingos, a bunch of other Baltimore based movies. Mike Rowe. Mm-hmm. He's a local guy, Dirty Jobs. And I have Cal Ripken. And Cal Ripken would be great because I think he lives on my peninsula. And he'd be great because I don't care for baseball. I don't like baseball. I don't follow baseball. So I would not be a fanboy. We should probably go like. I don't know what position he played. We should probably go like put lawn chairs in his driveway and refuse to move until he talks to us. Uh, well, that's a long driveway. So he wouldn't even see us from where uh. he is. And I had uh, Linda Carter. Linda Carter lives in Potomac. Wonder Woman? Uh, Martin O'Malley. He kind of, I don't know. He, he might. He's got, what else is he doing? He's not running for president. Yeah. So why not? Martin, come on down. Maybe he's got a band gig coming up. Yeah. Ed Norris. Okay. Yeah. I like Ed Norris. Uh, Michael Phelps. Um, and again, I'm not a swimming fan either. So it wouldn't be like I'm, I'm like hovering right. over him. Yeah. We can just talk about, well, then what else would we talk about? I, My list is a little bit more attainable. Wait, no, hold on. Oh, Judd, Josh Legum. I'd love to get him on. Judd Legum. Judd. Did I say Judd? Oh, wait, hold on. Let me type that. Josh. Judd. Uh, he's kind of a gadfly on Twitter now. He ran for um, delegate? Uh, delegate here in District 30. Yeah. Smart guy. Haseem Rockman. Who? Haseem Rockman. He was the um, he was the heavyweight champion in the world for about a month. He beat Lennox Lewis. He was from Baltimore. Okay. Knocked Lennox Lewis out because Lennox Lewis wasn't taking it seriously. He's just he was a real sweet guy. And then Lennox Lewis um, came back and cleaned his clock. Okay. But he was a sweet guy. I liked him. He's all about his mom. I'm Irish. So you know how I feel about that. And then uh, yeah, I have a couple on there. What how about you? My list is not nearly as long, but it's a lot more attainable, I think. I think I'd like to talk to uh <laughs> Coach Kenny Matalolo from Navy. Yeah. Not so much about football and was and, he heavyweight champion of the world? Uh, no, but he was uh in went to the University of Hawaii. Oh, um, that's about the and same. Uh, just sort of find out what it's all about. What a coaching, what the coaching job is all about for the Naval Academy. Not not so much specifics on the football, but just coaching in general. And his counterpart, uh, Chet Gladchuk, who's director of athletics. I would love to find out. Uh, I mean, you know, they they make an awful lot of money. 
uh, you know, the athletic director of a university, um, how that how that all works out there. Well, maybe I should do that. I'd like to talk to Governor Hogan again. Um, we had him in here. Or I cannot new- repeat this stream. Well, that was kind of interesting. Yeah. That's uh, thank you. My Echo Dot yeah. talking to me out of nowhere. Yes, yeah, totally recording you. That's not creepy at all. <laughs> but I would like to have uh, Governor Hogan again. I mean, we spoke with him in his office. A lot of buzz about a presidential run. We'll see. Well, and speaking of buzzing about runs, I would like to talk to Kelly Schultz, who is the Commerce Secretary for the state of Maryland, because she's rumored to be a potential Republican candidate for governor to succeed Hogan, which I don't see a governor or just see a governor. I don't see a governor succeeding Hogan. I don't see a Republican succeeding Hogan. I'm- I don't know. Uh, I think the, his pro business approach and he's, again, he's Republican classic. You know, he's very, very moderate. Matter of fact, I see a lot of the comments of Republicans on Facebook, on the Capitol Gazette uh, Facebook page that they're, they're kind of attacking him for not being conservative enough or right enough. I right. you can't please anybody. Right. And then I'd like to talk to Boyd Rutherford again. I would, um, you know, just see what what his plans are. I mean, we've heard that he's not interested in running. And um, Such a great I think name. the man to watch, though, actually for governor next next time around will be um, Peter Francho. Yeah. Well, but, you know, we've been saying that for years. It seems like he's been positioning that for years. He's waiting for the right time, which which it is. I mean, he's, well, he's a patient man. He's he's very centrist. I mean, he's not afraid to take care of, you know, take on the on the House of Delegates or the state Senate. There may be some changes there between the health between Speaker Bush and Senate President Mike Miller. Yeah. You know, there's there's a Democrat that would have, you know, in a, in a Democratic state, probably get a lot of Republican votes. As yeah, well he's pretty well because, liked. I mean, he's gained most votes than anybody statewide. And um, he's still young enough to do it. And he listens to us, too. Yeah. He, he told us he drives around the state and he listens to our podcast. Matter of fact, he called us. He just says that. No, he, he called us to. He wanted to be on. <laughs> but... Uh, that's sort of my, my short list there that real quick that I'm going to start to work on a little bit. Um, of course, uh, Stuart Pittman, I want to keep checking back with him throughout his thing as we have done with him and also Mayor Buckley. And we still do the crab cakes. You know, we're mm-hmm. kind of cranking those out. I did one with uh, Tom Papa last week, who's a huge comic. I'm a huge fan. So I was very excited. To talk He's coming to, to Ramstead in a week or so. Ram said he'll be there on Saturday. He's doing two shows. He's got a five and an eight. But I bet you the, the eight was, was sold out. So they added the five. And when I interviewed him a few days ago, the five was filling up really quick. And this isn't one of those things where I got to spur ticket sales because, A, we're not paid to do that. And, B... Because he actually is a pretty top, he's a top shelf comic. So when I saw it, it was filling up pretty quickly. So I'll bet you it's sold out by the time you hear this. But if not, that'd be an incredible opportunity to see him. But we had a, we had a lot of fun talking to him. So we're still sprinkling those crab cakes in there. Could be. And the other thing I'm doing is on, on I on Annapolis on the Daily News Brief, I'm going to start a uh, sort of a legacy business series, just sort of little uh, crab cakey things for I on Annapolis Daily News Brief, just talking about legacy businesses that have been in town in business for you know about 20 years and longer. Yeah, that's cool. Um, just you know, how they started, where they're going, where they are now, what were the struggles to deal with uh, with the city and uh, move on from there and see how it goes. So you're not going to miss that. So you want to subscribe to the daily briefing. So just go into your Alexa skill and sub- and activate the skill for your Alexa. She's Here listening. Here are three of the most popular skills. Uh-huh. First is question of the day. Daily trivia. Every day, <laughs> question of the day poses a Alexa, new challenging stop. question for you. She's nice. Shut up, Wench. <laughs> but you're also going to want to go on to wherever you get your podcast. So that's Google Play or Apple Podcasts. And you want to subscribe to the Ion Annapolis Daily Briefing or maybe subscribe to ours, too, since you're listening to it right now. And you want to have a rating and a review because all those things help us with the with the algorithms. And tell your friends. Yeah. And neighbors. Yeah. Hey, we're not going to hit it out of the park every time, but we, we're pretty consistent. Got any questions? Send them to us. Email info at themarylandcrabs.com. You can tweet at us at MD Crabs Podcast. You can Facebook. We have friends. Facebook group. us, yeah. Yeah, we, we have a page and we have a group. Join both those. Have you got any suggestions on guests? Bring them on. You've heard our wish list. Let's hear yours. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we have a phone number too, but we don't know it don't offhand. Don't remember what it is. It's in the notes. Look, I, I think look. it's four. four let me try. 443 266 3600. Let me see if I know that yet. Now I'm going to open up my phone and see if I can figure out what it is. This makes for compelling, compelling podcast. I'm pushing the buttons and the number is 443-266-3600. Right. So you can just call and leave a voicemail for us. It or can you, be obscene. Or you can send a text. Oh, we prefer the obscene ones. Yeah. Well, 
you were thinking obscene kind of sexy, but we're getting the other obscene kind. Oh, but. oh well. Then don't leave those. All right. That'll do it for this week. Yep. See you next week. This has been the Maryland Crabs podcast with Tim Hamilton and John Fernay. Sure to follow them in all the regular places, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and online at themarylandcrabs.com. Take a moment to rate us on iTunes. Now, get the hell out of my kitchen. Seriously, go! You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.